Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 38 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson and internationally recognised and the world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader David Linticum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, Cloud Computing Recruitment Specialist placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. In this week's show, we are talking about that according to a survey by Training Magazine, American companies spent 91 billion US dollars on staff training last year, almost a third as much again as they did in 2016. That equated to more than 1,000 US dollars for every staff member being taught. Make sure you stay until the end to get David's top three tips on training. Hi Dave, it's great to have you on the training show again this week. Yeah, it's a great topic. It's great to be on the show. Thank you. As you know, you are always welcome, sir, to be a part of this show. It would never be the same without you. <laughs> <laughs> you can always do shadow puppets and probably get more listeners. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> welcome to the Cloud Computing Show with Brad Nelson yeah. and David Lindigan. Okay, sorry, we'll get a bit serious. Talk about some training. Sorry. Right, so we've got a great opening question for this week. Is uh, Will cloud training get a larger portion of the enterprise budgets from large companies, Dave, or small companies for that reason? Yeah, I think that uh, they should, and I think that we're not as uh, focused on training as we were, you know, uh, a few years ago. And I think that's uh, probably a trend that's, you know, occurred because we had kind of a downturn in the economies over time, and I think we went through a recession, and therefore the training stuff got tossed out. Now that we're adding stuff back in, everybody's getting busier. We're not necessarily focused on training as much as we should. Um, you got to keep in mind that a trained uh, person in your company, a trained staffer, is going to be as much as twice as much uh, efficient and uh, productive than someone who's not trained. And I, I think that kind of falls back on you as their managers and their leaders to make sure they have the right training available. Um, and, you know, me personally, it, it's funny, I, I, I don't like being trained, I, I don't like attending classes and things like that, but the reality is, I'm much more productive by understanding the way mechanisms occur and how things are entered in and different accounting systems and also learning things that I typically, you know, aren't necessarily passionate about, you know, the, you know, entering timekeeping for things like that, uh, examples like that. And so I think going forward, the training just kind of becomes something that needs to be a higher priority within these organizations. I mean, the study kind of found out we're spending $1,000 of, you know, every staff member being taught according to a survey and training magazine. And I think it should be twice that. I mean, there's no reason that I wouldn't give somebody, uh, you know, 2000 to $5,000 a year to spend anywhere they like in, in different training programs. And I, and I think that they have to find out what they're passionate about and understand things that are rela related to their jobs and making sure if they want to go back to school, the money's there to make that happen. And this isn't something I think we're thinking about as much anymore. And I, I think that, uh, you know, training is probably much more important than giving credit for within the boards of directors and the budget line, things like that. And it kind of fell by the wayside because uh, we did go through a downturn right now with cloud computing. It's more important than ever. So we have to kind of keep up with something. You know, Amazon's probably, you know, putting out, you know, uh, several services a week, you know, in their cloud based systems. The ability to keep up with that is almost a you know, a full-time job. You know, Azure is changing all the time. Google's changing all the time. And the ability to kind of leverage architectural patterns and best practices and leveraging multi-cloud and AI-based systems, things like that, also changing all the time. It's not enough just to kind of read the tech press. It, you really have to understand the ins and outs and the depths of this stuff, you know, to a level where you're able to tend to take it and use it in a sentence within the organization. And the only way you can do that is stop for a couple of days and understand this stuff. And I think that we're probably at a crisis where we have too much you know, need for training versus not enough training. And I think organizations are in essence, not necessarily taking the full advantage of their employees, not taking the, not, not say we're taking advantage of the employees, but their ability to be the most productive that they can be and the happiest they can be. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's just having, implementing the right training, being consistent and, and making sure that the the outcomes are, are going to be the right outcomes for the organization and the employees are going to be happy with that and that they're getting trained in in something that they're interested in. I think they're, they're really key. I think it was Diane Gearson, she was the head of uh, human resources for IBM, said that, you know, 
it's so important for employers skills to remain relevant in the marketplace not only now but sort of going forward for the company to have the the dynamics of shift and change from from my point of view certainly as well as you know what Diane Diane was saying but you know she's saying you know it it really is the lifeblood of the company isn't it having the right training in place wouldn't you agree yeah it is and getting a culture of uh, continuously learning i think that's probably the most important thing I mean, when I was CEO of a, of a tech company years ago, you know, one of the things that I did that uh, the board have, had a problem with, but I insisted that it occur, that uh, any uh, training that uh, classes that people took, in essence, to get them more technical skills to do their jobs better, I gave them a thousand more dollars a year. So in essence, I also paid for the training and gave them a thousand. This is on top of the bonuses and the the scheduled raises they have. And, and of course, people, you know, kind of, you know, saw that as a windfall and they took many classes to get the extra thousand dollars a year uh, on their own time and, you know, nights and weekends and things like that. But the reality is I put out very little and I got back a ton more uh, because uh, I had exceptional people who weren't afraid to continuously learn and express and and uh, expand their minds in terms of where things are going and to be relevant to their job. They didn't get gardening training and things like that. But obviously the technical skills that they needed to, in essence, you know, apply to the organization. And, and the reality is I put metrics together to figure that out. You know, I was able to kind of bring that back to the board of directors and it became kind of a best practice in the company going forward. And I think that's something we have to think about. I mean, this is not necessarily you being generous and providing training. This is about you being greedy and uh, understanding that you're going to get $2 back for every dollar you spend in this stuff. So why don't you go ahead and spend it? Yeah, it truly is. That return is, it, it just is, uh, it not only from a retention point of view, the return, but equally, like you say, from the the, out, the output of what that, that particular employer is going to give back to the companies, it's just so important from a, a fulfillment point of view from the employment, but also from a monetary point of view back to the business. I think they're, you know, they're very, they're very well, I mean, the, the data's there that highlights great training. And I think it's just like almost a crime not to pay attention to that on what it can do for a team, an organization, for the bottom line. You know, like you say, put a dollar in, get two dollars back, great investment. So, I mean, look, it leads us on nicely to your top three training tips, Dave, for this week. So, uh, you know, looking forward to those. Yeah, number one is, and this is kind of the theme of this show, I mean, splurge, splurge on training, it's cheap these days. I mean, uh, computer-based training and classes and um, the automation of training that we have today are excellent. So it's not like watching videos on VHS tapes like we did several years ago, uh, where you couldn't have an interaction with the, um, the instructor and ask questions and things like that. We have very dynamic interactive courses with, um, where you have access to professionals who are able to kind of guide you, guide you through things. And by the way, this isn't $5,000 a course or $10,000 a course, you know, it's $20 a course. And so it's cheap. Uh, so go ahead and make the uh, expenditure to you know get these things in place within your organization. So whether it's Linda or G Cloud Guru or you know there's Umpty or, or Simply Learn, there's there's a there's a ton of them out there. You know go ahead and subscribe to the service that best meets your needs uh, because uh, you need to get people the platforms so that they can go ahead and learn as they need to learn on demand. Great metrics to determine the effectiveness of training, as I mentioned um, you know during the show, is that ultimately. You know, how much productivity gains are we getting back from the training? And you can go ahead and figure that out yourself. And, you know, whatever metrics you use to measure productivity in terms of developers, checking in code, you know, air code errors, corrections, um, you know, making poor decisions and then eliminating the poor decisions to make correct decisions, things like that. Ultimately, it's going to be something that has to be um, measured. And so you need to put the metrics in place to figure out how monetary information can be measured from this stuff. And by the way, be realistic about it. A lot of metrics have a tendency to kind of, you know, move into the direction of where your views are. But I would, you know, look at this as something that's realistically what value is coming back to the business and also be able to react to it. In other words, if some training is not working, go to a different training company, go to a different modality of, uh, of training approaches, things like that. Finally, continuously improve. Um, so in other words, as we go through you know, many of the larger companies that I work with have training committees where they continuously look at the training that's going on and, and basically reviewing the curriculum and making sure they're improving the, what the opportunities are for training going forward, making sure they're communicating things up correctly, make sure they're awarding training correctly you know, uh, for core behaviors and, you know, not necessarily trying to do the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Great top three tips there, Dave. Thank you so much for being part of the training show this week. 
My pleasure, man, always. Yeah, absolutely, cool. And I think, you know, if you're up on your training, you won't end up just another brick in the wall. <laughs> Someone's a Pink Floyd fan. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, well, look, you know, thanks again, Dave. It's been awesome. And thanks for watching, everyone. We really hope you enjoyed watching this. You can get Dave on Twitter, which is at David Linthicum. I'm also on Twitter, at Nelson underscore Heliard. That's for Instagram and Facebook as well. So check us out. Let's have a chat online, social media. We're down with that. Uh, Dave loves getting on Twitter and uh, does loads of stuff on social media, which is awesome. Uh, we're also on LinkedIn as well, so check us out there. Remember to like, subscribe, comment, and uh, you know, share these videos in the channel with your friends and colleagues. It might be of help to them or someone that's looking to get into cloud or find out a bit more about cloud. We do the C-Suite show, the Australia show, and obviously this, the training show. Um, and also click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any uh, future videos that come out every week. So again, thanks for watching and until next week.